Okay, we're going to go ahead and call the order at 5.04. Get stamped for the Pledge of Allegiance. The liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll go right on to item C, which is public comments. Um, let's see if we have, we have anybody in addition with us in person that we do have Marcus. If Marcus wants to, Marcus, are you interested in public comment tonight? Say no. Okay. All right. Um, so we're actually going to move right on to item D, uh, which on our agenda is the floor of the Harvard High School construction site for the FHS building committee members only. So for right now, we'll be departing obviously from our location, but um, Devin actually has something on here if somebody does happen to join um, us virtually. And then we're going to actually come right back here and continue on uh, with the rest of the agenda.
Um, well, first of all, thank you to OMG for welcoming the wonderful trailer. I'm getting a lot of fun to always hear. So uh, we'll have to see if that's going to happen. But uh, appreciate um, the hospitality and the tour was fantastic. Thank you so much. I think we can all say wonderful progress. Just absolutely amazing. It was great to see. We appreciate that, the, the time with us there as well. Um, any questions coming out of that from anybody who's over the committee? For the record, I heard out there that it was on time. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> under <laughs> and under budget. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> All right, excellent. So why don't we'll keep going here then. Our next item on the agenda is E, um, is the minutes. So could I get a motion to approve the attached April 19th, 2023 minutes? Second. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, we will go right on to item F, which is for spot is received 418 2023 to 515 2023. We did actually have um, two items um, in the in our agenda packets, um, both included, I think, one in particular question, just on some details. Yep, we're we're that came in earlier this week. This I believe the same day the agenda went out, so we're still waiting, waiting on a, a response to you. Okay. Great. And we did receive a very nice message of uh, congratulations and thanks on both, on both which, was, which was nice to see. Um, but I also take the opportunity to remind um, our community members, always take the opportunity to ask questions of any kind uh, to the building committee right on our homepage of our website. There's the comment form at the bottom. So please use that uh, for anything, any, you know, to communicate with us on anything that you're interested in. Um, so we'll go right on to item G, which is reports. Um, G1 is chair report, nothing specific from me this evening. So we'll right, go right on to town council liaison report. Uh, not a time camera over the last month, but not, not from the council standpoint, but what I reported on. Uh, the budget passed through one, uh, the referendum items passed through one, I should be up into that a little bit. Um, other than other than that, uh, Memorial Day parade's coming up. Uh, so it'll be down on the Farmington side up to this year uh, because of the bridge work that we're doing. So we're kind of kept that uh, swapping it back and forth. So it'll only be done on that. That's it. Okay, any questions for Tommy? All uh, right, Board of Education liaison report. Anything any questions for that? All right, nineteen twenty-eight building committee liaison report. Yeah, thank you, Meg. Um, as everybody knows, the referendum passed, and uh, our last meeting was more of a level setting meeting. We didn't. There's nothing really substantive to report, but it's really just to address schedule development uh, approval of new contract with Silver and Petroselli for phase two, entering to design the de development stage, and we'll drafting construction documents. And probably the um, most important thing, which uh, Chris and Russ Arnold wanted to, and we talked about a little bit, is just working collaboratively with this committee, uh, our professional partners here uh, in terms of demolition and scope of work. And so we can really make the two projects work together. So hopefully we can all just work collaboratively going forward. Okay, we can just add on to that, right? So some of that work has started. Um, uh, being with Richard Segan and some of the other consultants um, had just, I think, was it today? I mean, I don't know if you want to report out on, sure. on that. Um, so, um, as Chris mentioned, uh, we're collaborating with both project teams is important. And one of the first things we asked Richard Segan to do was help us establish um, the project limit line for both mm -hmm. projects. And so who's picking up the utilities on which side of the line, who's taking care of the demolition on which side of the line. The Silver Picicelli has some different site plans. So we're gonna be revising the high school site plans to accommodate that. Um, we had originally in our demo drawings showed more demolition of the 1928 building. The Silver Picicelli plan shows less demolition so uh, we're in the process right now of drawing that limit line between both projects. 
uh, and there will be, once we get the full details worked out, we'll be submitting them to ONG and tally up the pluses and the minuses. Uh, and then we'll see where we are. So that's, we just barely got started. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other questions on 1928? All right, we will go right on to owner's rep report. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, so a couple of things. I do, do you have a budget sheet to pull up? Or you have a yeah. um, one is the high school and one is central office. Oh, okay. Okay. So, why don't you give the record? Um, okay, so in addition to the budget, which we'll review in a sec, um, we are still continuing our opportunity meetings every week. Um, to review salaries with team voters, RFI submittals with OMG to XCP. Um, it's been going well. It's been helping prioritize um, submittals that CSVP needs to jump on. Um, if something has a long lead time or if something needs a little bit more information, you know. Uh, so that's been really helpful. And then we've also kind of renewed the design committee again to go over FFNE. Um, it's really important for us to make sure that we get decisions made for activity so we can uh, put it out to bed and then eventually get purchase orders issued so we can make sure everything's ordered and arrived on time. Um, same thing goes for technology. Um, everyone, CSVP, OMG, and CSV have all been reviewing technology and activity with um, the design committee and all, you know, the um, public schools. Um, people that need to be involved, and I think that's it for that. Unless I missed anything. Um, so what you have in front of you, you should have two. One is for the high school, um, and then one is for central office. So the first page for the high school is basically a general overview of where we stand currently for the project. So you'll see what our budgeted amounts were. Uh, what we paid today out of those amounts, and then what our balance is um, for TSVP. Uh, professional fees include CSG and then other consultants like IMTL, um, and then obviously ONG's construction costs, and then we jump down to FFME technology, which you'll note that we haven't spent anything because we haven't ordered anything yet. So um, we still have about 4.9 million in FFME technology. Um, and then the the important part that I want to highlight here is the owner contingency. So you started off with a little over 16.2 million in owner contingency. So far, we've only paid or utilized 124,000 of that, um, which brings me to the next two pages. So on page two, that's our contingency owner contingency tracking log. Uh, so on that log, anything that's in parentheses has been deducted from owner contingency, and anything that's not in parentheses has actually been added back to owner contingency. So you'll see there's more credits back to the project than there are um, deductions from the project. Um, so this owner contingency obviously includes some of the amendments made early on in the project. Um, then it includes all of the approved change orders through ONG. Um, and then also we'll probably talk about in the finance uh, portion of the meeting, the builder's risk insurance, which we had to take out about 118,000 um, to buy out the new policy or the town did. Um, so this is just owner's contingency log. If we go to the third page, um, this is the change order log. So this is kind of duplicative of um, what ONG runs, but this is what we keep track of. So this includes anything, any change order, whether it's been approved or pending. Um, my color has got messed up on here, but, um, and you'll see at the top that we have about 217,000 in approved change orders. And then we actually have a little over 30,000 in pending change orders that we're still in review on. Um, and then that totals at the bottom. And this just helps us, helps us keep track of what the reason for the change order was, dates, so we can make sure things get submitted to the state on time. Um, and that, and I think that's it for that. And then central office is pretty much the same four amounts, except um, obviously we haven't had a lot of change orders for central office or approved any. So the only one on there is still pending. We still haven't finalized the cost for that one. 
And just, I'm sorry, one thing to note just on the change order log is some of these totals are not vetted yet. They're order of magnitude. So they're, they're initial estimates that come to the um, OAC meetings. And then sometimes we get a final number. So some of these may be kind of placeholder numbers. Yeah, as an example, like one of them is the flag flow. There's a zero dollar in that proposal request. It's not an actual zero dollar. We we got that proposal request about a week ago. We weren't able to put a number on it, but there will be a cost associated with it. But for the most part, everything has a number either estimated or an actual great contract or PCO that's being currently jetted out. So anything that's a pending that hasn't been submitted formally yet. Um, and then the last thing to know is the reimbursement payments are at the bottom um, of each summary sheet. So there's notes next to it, but if we have what we've been reimbursed to date and then what the town's expected to receive. In the next draw. In the next draw. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So that's been submitted. Um, I don't believe the town has actually received payment on it yet. So once they do, we'll go ahead and submit another one. But right now, between I I forgot the central office number is, but you're looking around a little over 6.8 million to get back to the high school. And they have, what is it, 60 to 90 days for turnaround? Yeah. So yeah. we're getting close to when we should yeah. get that it's 6 million. Usually within three months, sometimes it's quicker than others. Yeah. I think the 6 million might take a little, a little more time. A little more time. Yeah, this was a bigger draw. Remember, the first draw that we made to this date, we were only allowed to build for um, the refined piece that were spent from the beginning because the we were going back out to a referendum and then the full construction costs hadn't been vetted and the state informed us we were only allowed to go that. So say that it kind of goes back all the way back to enabling phase and you know bill from there to now. So there was quite a bit more than our typical two month enabling. So you won't you won't see that kind of a, a draw in the we future. Like yeah, but it's a good number. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good number to help catch catch, catch you back up and keep Joe keep Joe happy. Does anyone have any questions on that? I know I kind of ran through it a little bit fast. A uh, quick one, the second phase, the owner of the kids and on it. Yep. So anything that was credited is in a plus number, anything that's in spent is in, a, is in parentheses. Correct. The way I understand it. And yep. then the total spent to date is not in parentheses. Technically, that should be. Technically, that, sh that should be. It should be. In okay. Because then, then if, it, if it was a plus, it would be going the other way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, hard. Hard. I, yeah. it's a little confusing. <laughs> But I think what we wanted to show with the, the log is that, I mean, this dates back to pre-referendum when we were, you know, adding the kitchen consultant and stuff like that, is that, um, you know, each month when we have a lot of credits back, we actually haven't dipped into contingency all that much, 124000 So mm -hmm. to be this far along in the project and out of the ground, we can still, you know, have $6.1 million in contingency. Yeah, it's, really, yeah, really, it's, really, really it's, really it's a very good spot. But keep in mind, we have, a, we have a building that we have to demolish and we don't know what's yeah. under yeah. the ground. So it's, it's a good place to be, though. Mission is not accomplished. Yet. <laughs> I think, but it's a good place to be at. at yeah. this point in time. I think the amount of credit to the show that we keep going back is being where if I mean, we, can, we can save a little bit of money. That's also a good thing, too. I think, you know, going back out of the referendum and the work that we put into trying to identify more. BE after we were done with BE and helped identify a few things that just made sense. One little clarification on the second page. So mm -hmm. uh, first minor credits and ice. Um so that's clarified on, on the first page. I get that. Yep. But um these this is for state change order. This is not for this is not an OMG change order, correct? So when we get to a point a million dollars. Or whatever it is for change orders with ONG, then they then we get start getting charged the percentage from ONG. But this those don't have anything to do with the contract the town has with ONG, correct? That would be the 24. Uh no. your credits and ads yeah. are your credits and ads are uh um, we have to take our PCOs, the, the amount from our PCOs, not the previous. Right. So this isn't a, this isn't a track QPO track for from lower G. This is we're taking a balance from contingency to cover the costs that the town is paying directly yeah. to 
um, for the steel structure, steel engineer for, for those costs. Yeah. Right? So, so let me so let me be clear. So the six point two three four million that was already built into the budget. So when you're yeah. using that money or anything left on this order continuity log, it's not as if you're adding or taking away money. It's you're you're using whatever's in that bucket and either pulling from that bucket or adding to it, depending on what the change is. Well, I, I get what you're saying, but, but what I'm saying is we need to account for that when we apply to the state for reimbursement. However, Direct those are, are yeah, corrections for for TSKP, CSG, the C, UTC. Russell Dawson for how I'm reading it. Those don't have anything to do with the, the town's contract with OG. So we, okay. we still need to maintain a balance of change orders with OG so that we know when we start paying. Okay, do you want to track yeah. our AIA change orders? Because these are PCOs, our yep. AIAs collect four PCOs. Yeah. Like as an example, PCO number three, the breach trap. That has the trade. Cost it has our GL and it has our performance and payment bond. Right? It doesn't have a fee, right? Because it's still under that million dollar approved. Yeah. And then if if yeah. big if we ever reach that million dollars, then we would have our stipulated yeah. fee. But you, yeah, you could That's track it separately. Just with our yeah. AIA change mm -hmm. orders. Mm -hmm. Part of our original negotiations with LMG at a board night that LMG agreed to get that. Or to forego their fee the first million dollars of change orders. Once we hit over a million dollars of change orders, OMG was intended to capture their typical fee on those change orders, their typical percentage. Which you'll see on the, the second page of our PCOs, we've highlighted where we crossed cross it up. And then if we get to that point, then it just simply calculates. And I think also it just it highlights that. We've, we've actually added more into contingency since construction than we've actually gone to for change orders. That amount, if, when you don't count for that amount, which was previous decisions that took from That is very true. Yeah. So this will track anything. If the building committee decides they want to buy a piano, I, I don't write anything comes out of contingency. And that's going to be, that, that'll be a line item on this number, but it's nothing going to be with it. I think that's what we're saying. I don't believe there's a piano on that. Pianos are not reversible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was no, I, I raised my hand, but you would answer that. I was just where historically tracking is on the burn rate on the so where do we stand? And you, you guys said that we're in good position. Burn rate, I like that. All right, any other questions or points of clarification on Okay. Why don't we go right on to architect report? Yeah, I just will have a couple of comments and then I'm going to ask Art to continue with the architect's report. I just want to pick up on what uh, Mark and Sammy mentioned about FF and E and technology. Don't forget that's those are additional phases to the project. So uh, if I remember this correctly, the high school had four phases, starting with the enabling package and each of these phases has been approved or needs to be approved by the state before it goes out to bid in order for that package to be eligible for reimbursement. Um, the second phase was the building of the building and the demolition. Uh, the third phase will be FF and E, furniture and equipment. The fourth phase will be technology. And uh, after Sam, you brought up doing an OAC meeting, do you, I know that um, Matt Ross has already been getting uh, things purchased through another grant, E-rate, uh, I said no. And he said, well, then let's make sure that we communicate so that we, there's no duplication of technology. Um, so I contacted Matt and he gave me a preliminary list of this technology, which I believe he shared with everybody. Um, so we do need to have those meetings with Matt 
and it would be great if OG were available to participate in those discussions uh, because we have a timeline to meet. And if uh, Matt was considering any changes that may have an impact on outlets, now's the time to flag these things. I Anyway, I think it would be good if we had a technology meeting. I know that FFE is meeting with him uh, to work that out. Um, but I think the tech, the FFME target for submission to the state is, I believe, November the 1st. Uh, and that's to give enough time to actually purchase orders, be sent out, and purchase of furniture, be developed, and then delivered and be ready to receive furniture. And the same thing with technology. I think. We haven't established the date to go to the state, but probably it would be around the same time. So we talked about today is having on a technology meeting on Mondays following that FFN meeting as well. Um, okay, uh, that may not work for me, but all right, we'll figure it we'll out. Um, that's all I had, I had to report, partially or on. Okay, what I need to add is uh, last weekend this week, uh, we, we are reviewing the door hardware uh, for the high school as well as the central office with our hardware consultant as Apple and also uh, our commenting uh, specialist, Dave Huckley. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to just to make sure what is what is what it, whether it aligns with what the basic design is and what uh, the, the town's requirement, hardware requirement is. So we are in the process of kind of reviewing that uh, this week and next week. And uh, this week, uh, we are mostly focusing on the curtain wall for area D and do hardware frames and uh, for for area D too. So that's a focus for this week. Okay. I know they're not kind of working in weekly at that many meetings. So I think where, where he's from what I'm hearing, and you know, the only reason uh, Matt was to I'm sure just for the fact that his memory is e rate has a higher to create than this project. So that's why um, you know, Matt is a resident and always thinking about how we can get the most uh, for our developers. So this is spent on uh, a pilot um, and how council and board have you know supported that just to save a little more money. So if we go to E-rate groups, no, you can't do it through the project. So it has to be done through oh, okay. our budget. Mm -hmm. So that's now kind of thought ahead of time. And at the time he, he was thinking of this, we only had a 20% reimbursement rate. So 40% was significant. Now we have 30%, but still 40% is better. That's right. Matt knows a lot about technology. Yeah. That's it. Unless any questions. And I would only add another update is that yeah. we went to a conference with a furniture conference um, with DNP and you know their consultants. So that was really um, that was really important because they had time not only to view the latest furniture but also to collaborate yeah. and make some decisions there too. And aren't you setting up a model classroom? That's what I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. With, with sample furniture. Yes. Yeah. I think in that same vein, they're going to be a model. We're going to do a, a mock up of. If with cardboard, as far as we're in one of the classrooms, we'll put it in cardboard, mimicking, we'll put whiteboard, tack board, we'll put a base cabinet, you know, a box. We're basically getting what we want to do is make sure that the outlets correspond with, you know, your tap and we're putting, you know, TVs in that location. So we're going to be doing that soon. And it's not going to be actual 
we, we might be able to get some base cabinets, but we're going to be doing a mock up and bringing the school. And that's yeah, great. Right. Yeah. No, it's a great way to do yeah. it and have people actually feel it. Yeah. Block, blocking is involved. Involved blocking is also blocking. Before we sheet run, we have to make sure that, you know, all, you know, on the fire alarm devices, everything is, is marked out. Because typically in a school, what, what you'll have, it, it gets busy around the door because you have a phone, you have, you have a light switch, you have in the science classrooms, you have an, an emergency push button for the gas. It gets very congested. So we, we do a coordination, an elevation drawing, and then actually in the field, okay, this is where we can go. Because you have to have ADA requirement, um, even with the casework, we'll build a box to make sure that that sink, a wheelchair can actually okay. go in. And um, as so those are things that we will do in conjunction with, you know, selecting the furniture. Mm -hmm. We just won't do the actual piece of furniture, you know, but that, you know, touch and feel because um, that's important that mm -hmm. you know what type of classroom chair or the teacher's chair, you know, that they know that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to do a touch and feel. They're going to tape up a, a section for classroom side, right? Mm -hmm. And then identify it different things. So, a lot of details. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions? Architect report. All right, CM report. CM report. Uh, I think <laughs> reported pretty much. Um, it's, it's going out there with a visual. Um, I could run through my report, but everything that you saw there, my report actually is to period ending April on uh, 30th. So what you saw out there is the the latest and greatest um, financially. You know, I'll reiterate where we are on budget and you know, schedule wise, we are on schedule. Our schedule, um, you know, I, I have my report where I show the milestones and how they they will fluctuate a little bit, but the end dates never change. Um, where we are in the project, we, we have a healthy contingency, but always remember that there's a, an existing high school that there's, there's inherent risk there that we don't know exactly how, you know, what is physically underneath the ground. Not to say that there is nothing, but there's there's a lot of other things there. Um, we are working with TSKP um, and uh, CHG with the professional partners meetings and uh, answering our RFIs, we're identifying what's critical and the submittals as well. And um, so uh, our summer logistics were We've been having bi-monthly meetings um, here. Actually, Russ Arnold has been, participated in those of where um, and CN, CNG, uh, Connecticut Water. Thank you for CSG to get CNG over here to actually respond, which was good. We did cut the check today, um, which is on your uh, agenda for a, a motion, but we did send out the payment. Um, the check is in the mail, uh, literally. So um, we're planning on doing that uh, summer work, which the CMG line goes up on teeth. So logistically on campus, we reviewed, and Sam, you were part of those discussions as well. As far as where we're gonna be working on campus, there's gonna be a lot going on. There are still summer programs this summer, but we're also looking at next summer as far as the move-in and the logistically, internally, George and I are, are working some of the you know thought process behind that before we have to get everybody into the room there might not be some summer programs up at the top of the hill because we're doing heavy demolition and move-ins and, and there's a lot going on uh, scout's been part of the, uh, some of the early early discussions on that but um if we we're looking ahead by not just weeks but by months it's nice to have you guys in here because you see, you know, our our daily boards. We talk about lean pull planning, but this is this these boards with uh, the post-it notes. That's our lean planning. So the foreman actually placed the tags. Well, each individual tag our commitments. That basically, when one trade is going to have an area ready for another trade, that's their work. Um, we will identify if they don't make that date, but they're in front of a room with twenty five. 30 foremen, men and women, and that's the date that they're going to have 
a specific area ready so that the next trade could come in. You saw it outside where you see certain trades working ahead of other trades with hangers and then the fireproofer. If the hangers aren't ready and the fireproofer is ready to go, there's, there's lack of coordination. So it levels off the manpower. We don't want to have fluctuations of manpower because that's inefficient. Um, it, it's good, uh, good practice. And, you know, I, I don't know if anybody knows where this actually came from Toyota, the car company, lean pole planning, and it's been incorporated into construction and that it's very simple, but it works. And through the drone footage that you do see on the project, there's always somebody working in every area. We don't want dead space because if there's dead space, there's inefficiency and there's not physical trade working in that area. Uh, we also want the drywall contractor to come out here with 50 workers, put all the framing in and then say, you know, I have no more work, I'm, I'm good to go. And then the electrician doesn't have enough manpower to actually fill in the walls with electrical uh, plumbing uh, as an example. So having it level off, it basically makes everybody work efficiently. Um, it also <clears throat> mitigates supply chain issues because these, each board is one week. So it forces the foreman to work out six weeks ahead of time. If any uh, constraint comes up, we put it on that uh, post-it uh, paper board. We identify an RFI that has to go into the architect. And um, basically we get materials. We're, we're foreseen six months and ONG foresees three to four months and even next year. So that also mitigates uh, supply chain issues. Also on the billing, there, you'll, you'll notice that certain trades are heavier on the billing percentage wise, but that means there's more material out here. By having the space of, to have the electrical panels, the feeders, pipe, we're getting the material now. And I'm, I don't have to wait six months from now when I do need the material, I have it here on site. That mitigates supply chain issues. So typically it doesn't eliminate all supply chain issues, but this is a big, this is basically what we do behind the scenes to make sure that everything is running efficiently. So that's all I wanted to report on. Um, if there's any questions, I'm just happy that you guys are here to actually see what, what we actually do in the trailer. And each row represents the buildings at the three or five distinct yeah, so, buildings. Yeah, kind of yeah each, it's an area and then each color is a different trade. So each trade is assigned. So this is UG underground pipe um, for the main gear. So that's the electrician, um, steel gym area. So each trade is assigned a color and then, and we never have all the trades on site at once. So, you know, there's only so many colors in the rainbow, but, um, you know, when the, the concrete guy demobilizes, we have more trades. So on average, we have about 80 construction workers on site on any year. It could fluctuate between 10, so between 80 and 90, sometimes 70, but the goal is to level off uh, manpower so that everybody is working efficiently. And when they work efficiently, the trades aren't as hungry on change orders because they're actually making money on productivity where that's where they make money. They, uh, Ferguson, as an example, they prefabricate, they're on a the plane bill, they're prefabricating down assemblies. Um, and a lot of the, 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 the racks, the, what they, what they would have to pay somebody out here to put the parts and pieces, they're actually doing it at the shop. Um, so by having this type of system, they, they're able to come out here and you, you see within, we were out here just four or five months and we were already sheeting a building, which is, which is pretty good. And the winter did help. <laughs> I'd like to make a comment on this. I, I love this technique. It's very old school. We've seen it and have actually used it ourselves. I think we call it the car trick. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's very effective. You get people in a the room, they make a commitment. It's much better than distributing a uh, computer schedule. I, I like it. 
but if somebody doesn't make that date, they have to explain in front of 30, 40 people why they didn't come in. And we'll, we'll actually, we have metrics of like, if they don't make a date, we'll circle it. But, and there's always one or two that don't buy into it, but when they see a room full of tradesmen, professionals, and including us, this is what you're gonna do, it actually works. And it's very rudimentary mm -hmm. what it does because you're you're putting your word on that on that board. If there's any other questions. I just feel bad that I moved a bunch of sticky notes on your I got to redesign this color map. It's <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will keep advertising a touch a truck um, for anybody that has small kids. And actually, uh, Scott did ask us to yeah, you weren't here because you have the day off, but we're going to see what we could do at having a touch a truck here with the police department and the fire department. Yeah, we just want to make that. sure that we don't conflict with flying trails because they do that. It just happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get some mixtures and triaxles down here. It won't be as you know. We have thirty pieces of equipment with twenty five pieces, but we'll get we'll get even the trades if um you know the site contractor will we'll coordinate something because those things. And I'll I'll tell you our OMG builds program has been just I, I think it's taken off to a level that we've never seen it. Um, we were at the economic development uh, breakfast this morning and I was talking with Rose there uh, and actually there were two students from the robotics team there and um, with one of the teachers from the high school and I said we'll do an ONG builds showing them the robots that we actually use. We use com compactors that go in the trench so to keep the worker safe they use a remote control. It's called a sheep's foot. It's it's a compactor. It's about the half of the size of this table. You put in the trench, and the, the the worker is using a remote control. The drone footage that we use when we're placing concrete with a pump truck, they're using a remote control to actually place, you know, working with, on the radio with the the workers that are actually pouring the concrete onto the slab bed. So those things. Um, I am going to have an architect do a presentation to the kids. A great idea. <laughs> as far as the professional careers, that yeah, professional and on the technical side, um, kids don't understand that there's good careers in construction and that you do need a college degree in a lot of them. And for the small segment of kids that college is not their thing, there's technical schools. Um, so every we bring 30 of them out here and Russ, Russ Christ is pinging my phone constantly. Actually, tomorrow we have the, the Spanish class. We have three sessions with, with the Spanish teacher. And we're going to explain, you know, how our JSTAs, we do have them in Spanish. And uh, even though we don't speak Spanish, we, you know, there's, there's workers out here that English is their second language. And um, the economics class was here uh, uh, last week and we explained we actually spent more time in this trailer explaining george was talking about garbage trucks and making sure that the garbage is out on time so that the garbage worker is running efficiently and they they just you're we're sparking something in them and trying to get them to go to into construction if it's a design professional a construction professional um, there's there's trade contractors if they like electrical work um so i i think and i've gotten feedback from the kids and i i know we've changed a few lines out there so okay. we have the biggest classroom setting over there that when i was a kid in school the most learning I got was taking field trips. And that you can you can teach by the book, but unless they actually see what we're doing, construction has a negative connotation. It 
No one wants, you know, good. Uh, everyone wants good roads and good schools, but they don't want to deal with construction, right? But there's there's professionals behind that construction that it's like there there are actually co careers that you can make good money and. We, the first thing we tell them, do you want to work in a cubicle or do you want to work with people? And we're working with people at all levels of society. So it's exciting. And I think bring your kids to the touch of truck. We'll <laughs> that was a great year long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, we, do, we do have our tough days. And everything. But, um, but it's, uh, it's a program that we've, uh, we've actually made it more comprehensive in Farmington. And like, you know, anything that Farmington does, including a topping off ceremony, it's always yeah. top notch. So. We're the best. Is that what I, mean? <laughs> I said top notch. You can take them whichever way you want. <laughs> and that went well, too. You guys did a little good job. I thought it was beautiful that day. So it was a little Yeah, that's a, that's a very nice transition. As we go into communications today, um, so we did want to take the opportunity to say thank you, to everybody, for all the effort, the planning, um, just the collaboration, coordination to make that happen on Saturday. It really was a special event. Um, I thought so. I think you know we had really great turnout from community members, family members, lots of people supporting us, which was wonderful. Um, and just really nice. I think across the board. So thank you to everybody who helped us make that happen to that for pulling together a lot of details for we'll to our committee that helped us organize the lending and all the, the school support um, and every, everybody doing that in the communication around it. So um, we did, I did see us in a publication today. Oh. Uh, I remember which one. Valley Press. Valley Press. Oh, Maybe, I, think. I don't know. I didn't go Whatever the weekly one is. is. It was a couple pictures in a, in a few sentences. Good thing, yeah. like enough to say mm -hmm. um, congratulations to the team. So I did see it there. Um, so just just great. And we have certainly the, the ribbon coming to look, look forward to more, probably sooner than we even think it will be here. Oh, that's going to be a party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We are compiling. Um, we had video footage. We had a GoPro on top of the beam. We had a drone. We had a photographer, so we're trying to compile everything, and and we'll be either putting on our website or distributing um, from the event. So the music was the music was awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was a great job. The steel workers were doing a shimmy on the. I didn't think they were. Wasn't that the best thing of all time? Like the little high five. Sorry. Uh, those are the spider wrenches that they use, so they were high fiving. Okay. Each other. Yeah, you're right, there was a little like boot made You haven't to put everything together, the pictures. Yeah, actually, a student took all the photos that are doing that. Um, the school AV department and custodial staff were a huge yeah. help for the event, so they're kind of compiling all of that. And um, I the stories, I would like all of that too yeah. because they like, want to have that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were running like a high tech production. <laughs> the GoPro <laughs> and the drone. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. But definitely the AV and custodial staff were a huge part. So they, they made the day happen. And our police department. And our police department. And the search truck. Yeah. Sandwiches. yeah. Sandwiches were good. So obviously, you know, more to come. We'll do more promotion of the event once we've got kind of some some other items. We'll obviously get the website up there. I'm sure Devin will help us do that so we can get more up there for people to take a look at. Um, but but very exciting. So um, oh, and we did get our proclamation. That's my pod at the moment. So I'll I'll make sure I get that to that. We have a we'll add it to our additional. We have we were I need awards. Yes. Um, and make sure that we <laughs> in the new building, yes, exactly. So, um, anything else? I don't think anything else for communications. Obviously, we didn't have our communications meeting, it was canceled for this week, but um, newsletter obviously hit the everybody's household just before the talking about. So hopefully, everybody got it. The inside of that was really nice with all the pictures. I thought people would be able to see a little bit more behind the tents. 
Um, and then obviously we'll be working on additional communications the next year, a while away. Obviously, we're going to start to out a little bit, but keep providing updates on the website if any need the progress on the whole picture perspective. We'll get those posted up. What is the ribbon cutting line up today? That would be our next day event. Yeah, exactly. Yes. All right. Anything else on communications? All right. So uh, two more to go. Financial subcommittee report. Um, so per usual, we did have a uh, financial subcommittee meeting uh, that was last Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll obviously remind me to everybody as well. We'll move on to new business file invoices. It was really review, overall financial review of the project. Uh, we did get that nice view ahead of time that you guys just saw of all the change orders, and that's going to be a nice running list for us all to kind of uh, keep track of all the decisions we're making meeting to meeting. That's a nice view for us to see. Um, so there'll be more detail in the financial subcommittee report. Um, but I know Kat's got a few things she also wants to share with us as well that we learned in that meeting with some, some good news, which is fantastic. Um, so last week, the town went out to a bond sale. Um, we issued $30 million of bond. Over $27 million of that is for the high school project. And we are very happy that we received a true interest cost of 3.27%, which is a really, really good interest rate at this time. So that will save us approximately $800,000 over the 20-year note from what we had for us. So that's really good news. Great news, Sarah. Um, I think that was it for financial. Um, I, I financial would just say we mm -hmm. have a financial tracking chart that we, oh, yes. we created, and I think we can start attaching it on this agenda, which will be a good illustration to show um, the project budget and then where we where we are each month, which is a nice little communication. There's cumulative costs against the budget, so you can see how we're actually tracking. It's a different nice visual rather than kind of seeing a chart form. I think it's nice to see. So I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. All right, so we do have an update on the on financial report for this month. Um, so in your packet is a financial report, and remember this is for our committee account that we had since the beginning of the committee. We did have some expenses. Um, if you look on the third page, towards the middle of the page, we had spent um, money for Tall Timbers Marketing, that's the postage for the recent newsletter that was sent to advertise the pumping off ceremony. Um, we have the 4,000 for Tall Timbers is an invoice that's on the agenda tonight for approval. Um, Mr. Tent is the tent company that we used, <laughs> and they were very efficient in setting up the tent. It, it worked out great. I think it was a nice focal point for the ceremony. Um, so that it was an expense. We printed the programs for the topping off ceremony, and then we have highlighted here cert truck and supplies. We haven't received the amount for that, but that would be coming out of this account. So um, a few expenses for that ceremony, but well worth it. And we have a total on hand of this account of um, just under $65,000. All right, so let's move right on to uh, new business. Uh, so get, I get a motion to the following invoice package for Farmington Central Offices. Motion. Second. All right, we'll open this up for discussion. Um, we have see if I don't think there's, it should look very familiar to everybody. Yeah, this is our monthly invoice for the Central Office. Any questions? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We'll move right on to H2. Could I get a motion to approve the following invoice package for Farmington High School? Motion. Okay. All right, we'll open this one up for discussion. Obviously, a little, a little more detail that we want to go through in this one. <laughs> um, okay, so if you go to the next feed, you'll see that financial challenger that Meg is talking about. Um, so the line, the darker line at the top is kind of the cumulative budget per month of what we're tracking spend. And then the line um, underneath it is the cumulative budget per month of what we've actually 
um, so that actually brings us up until this point in time. So it should include all the invoices um, that basically you're approving tonight. So it's the most up to date that you can you can get. Does anyone have any questions on that? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So then the next thing is our CFG's invoice. Um, that's just a three hundred monthly invoice. There's nothing. Um, stuff looking out on there. I don't know if anyone has any questions on that. Um, and then the next stuff is over at OMG. So our invoice is uh. We, uh, we review it. We send a pencil copy. Architect, um, PSD, CSG, make their comments. I also make my review comments, and we present it to the sub finance committee. So it's a total of four hundred four thirty nine forty seven dollars and eighty cents. A lot of the big items in here uh, are structural steel, which is coming to an end. Uh, United Steel about uh, one point four million in on their costs. We have concrete work as well. Uh, here, uh, fairly small here, but um, we have general trades, uh, which does you know the routine cleaning, and uh, we're going through the submittal process, and uh, they're at one hundred forty-one thousand six fifteen. Uh, GBS, which does the framing and the, the exterior sheathing, they're at 186,491. Uh, HHS Mechanical, 104,000. There's a, a sprinkler outfit. Um, just going through just the, the bigger uh, trade contractors. Yeah, so for, basically, we made the adjustments. This was the, the final approved. Uh, requisition. Um, we always saw, um, you know, with uh, as specifically with like when Ferguson uh, was building for the electrical panels, when we questioned it, CSG questioned it as as well. We have a building a bill of material. We have photos of the panels that they they have stored on site, uh, which is your typical electrical panel. We call them the tubs, but um, so they have all that the trim pieces. So everything's been uh, vetted. And uh, if questions on that, I can touch with. And we also have our reimbursables as well, which is part of our our contractual skin um, reimbursables. It was only about a thousand thousand and change. It was or ten thousand, excuse me, was a big dollar amount. And what you guys submit to us is actually. Like 500 pages, something like that. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a big, so for your sake, we did not accept <laughs> all of that, just the main. And if we store, store material on site, our office collects the UCC one uh, required forms, uh, which, you know, it's the, the title. So if the material is not physically on site and it's being stored off site, if the company was to go out of business or something happens, you have a title for that. It's insured. Uh, there's a filing with the state of Connecticut. Those are all OMG's requirements for authorized sort of materials, and we have those as well. This rec could be miles long. Um, so, but again, we, we make adjustments uh, with the design team and also CSG, and um, we also walk the site with everybody here. There's any questions, and occasionally I'll take a trip out to a, a trade contractor to make sure that we were questioning the trusses. They haven't built the trusses yet, but you know we weren't going to drive off to Canada, so we we asked for their you know photos and proof that they actually have the material. Any other questions on that? All right, so let's go right on. Next one is PSKP, Standard Professional Services Invoice for PSKP, I believe, right? Yeah, I don't know if it's on. No, it's, it's the, we have worked out uh, an average rate per month, which is, this would be a familiar number. It covers our personnel, but also all of our substance. Okay, so that's 
electromechanical and so on. All combined into one bigger. Okay. Um, I yet to <laughs> Um, we've had invoices from them at the last meeting. They're the commissioning agent on the on the job, so this is just their um, monthly invoice for the month of March. It is just through March, but uh, we do have you know roof, we have vapor barrier, we have wall constructed, the down site as far as the envelope commissioning. Review of that's not IMTL, but IMTL has a IES. Oh, okay, I thought you said IMTL. IES, yes, okay, yeah, and actually, we, we require that. So, they 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 they're they're yeah. yeah, yeah, and any consultant or any uh testing lab agency, um, we go and verify that they're actually here, that they actually furnish a report. So which we, even when Color Owning comes out here, we have everybody sign in. So that's the way we, we verify that they're actually on staff. And there's a safety aspect for that too, so that we know who's here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually a good segue right into the MTO. So they're the material DOJ. So they coordinate with OMG. When OMG ever needs to test them, seal, concrete, um, rebar, Anything like that, and then they'll send us all the reports. And then if there's an issue in the report that needs to be addressed, we'll be able to get it addressed, have them come back out, retest it as needed. Um, so we um, go back to January, it looks like. Um, but again, it's probably behind on their own. And that'll tail off because IMTL focuses primarily on concrete, soil compaction, concrete, rebar, structural steel. As we get into the interior finishes, how you get into the IESs and and other you know, consultants that will be verifying. So that that should. Um, and then we jump into orders. Mm -hmm. Over mm -hmm. the chamber. So these are uh, have been presented, embedded. Um, first we get sent to the decision making group and then it goes to the sub finance group. So there's that procedure that's already in place. It's a good thing that their credits, they're, you know, it's it's not a bad thing. So uh, uh this roofing cost, this was approved last month at 70,000. Um but it 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 actually was 71,030. So you should approve the uh, 1,030 at the difference so that when the job gets audited by the state of Connecticut five years from now, that they they look at the minutes to what actually is is approved. So for those of you that saw this previously, it's not an additional 71,000. It's just the differential. And on the change order uh, cover page, that is noted clearly okay. that it's, it is that, that okay. difference. Good. The 15,688 is uh, PCO for uh, fire apps clarification. This was a, a, a design coordination. Uh, uh, I won't say issue because it's it's actually a benefit. Um, fire wrap originally was a cost savings measure that uh, Ferguson Mechanical offered. And that also, uh, but it, it changed some of the framing. So there's, there's, added framing, but there's an overall credit because the fire wrap is not required. It's not typically done in school. So the engineer Cole Ronan said it was a fair credit. So overall, this is a, a 15,688 credit back to owner's contingency. Uh, PCO number 17, ASI number 11, uh, sprinkler system in lieu of fire shutters. This was actually an idea we we worked with TSKP in the past and we carried an allowance, uh, a GMP allowance portion of a GMP allowance, uh, which was allowance number one for fire shutters. Um, we carried about 120,000 fire shutters as priced up, came out to be like 160,000, but we already have sprinkler heads that were designed to protect the windows. So Michael Scott from your office, I, brought up the idea, I said, why can't we do this? And Michael ran with it. 
spoke with them. We then have to do a code modification because he sat down with the building official and the fire marshal in Farmington and was able to revise the drawings and say, we don't need these fire shutters. And now we don't have to see a bulky fire shutter at certain window heads. All we have to do is modify the sprinkler heads. So it worked with the hydraulic counts. The sprinkler outfit has change order to his contract, but overall it's a it's an overall credit on that allowance item. So it's a substantial credit um, that, of what we originally carried of 120. So with that differential for the sprinkler contractor to put those special heads in, it's a credit of 84,101. And then Michael ended up, uh, the PSKP ended up issuing an ASI so that we could document this change on the record drawings. ECO number 19, it was a, uh, it was a cost benefit that we identified with TSKP with the all five uh, ground face CMU walls, uh, which was in, in place of the sheetrock walls. So uh, the backup needed to be 18 age, was, which was an add to the framing. But there was a cost savings on uh, the walls, not the walls going to the deck, the CMU walls, the uh, sound. Sound um, acoustics, they were able to just use the regular CMU because you'll never see the ground base above ceiling. So, why spend that money above ceiling? So, there was a savings overall savings of not bringing ground face all the way to the, to the bottom of the deck. So, that's a 14,104 credit. Then, UMG is work. Yeah, this so this will be a reimbursable cost. It's we have a, a CM reimbursable cost for um, utilities, a uh, utility connection fees. So that check actually went out the door today. So we uh, we sent CMG um, the seventeen thousand three sixty nine seventy two, and it would be applied uh, in next month's reimbursable. So Meg, maybe we can take it. Should we take it out of this list? Because it's going to be paid it's later. Yeah. I, it'll be in your AIA. Though. It'll be in your AIA. So I don't want to double. Yeah, and that's it's technically not a change or so. Right? Well, it was the, the thing was is we needed to approve the invoice, right. yeah. and right. we didn't want it to delay the schedule. So right. it, we're grateful that you guys cut the check because yeah. our check cutting process is a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we want to amend this and take it out of here, it's going to go next month. Yeah, it'll be in your reimbursement. Again, we contractually we have that allowance yeah. too for the utility. So, you know, we, as soon as we got the, we approved in uh, the our accounts payable and sent the check. Yeah. Financing. Financing. We did it. Approved the invoice to be paid originally out of because the rental fees also have it, some utility connection budget. Right? So. Uh, they can between the two, we're open, we're down and out, right? Because the land will look nice. Um, every source is going to be a, a large number because so every source is already paid. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. Connecticut Water that's the one that's uh, Russ is right. working yeah. with uh, uh, that's the uh, upper management of CP right. water to, to revise it. it not going to be as large as it, and what they originally said. So finance committee approved to pay out that line item, so that that line item will no longer be touched. The college will stay in the federal fees. They'll come out of their reimbursement item and be approved and then we say it. All right. So yeah, I think it makes sense. We'll, we'll just make a slight amendment yep. to remove that off of the invoice package as we see yeah. here when we when we do approval mm -hmm. for the committee members. Mm -hmm. If there's any other questions, I can ask. We just need to do. Oh, you want to do the <laughs> risk? Yeah, insurance. and then the last one in this invoice package is builder's risk insurance, which is part of our contractual obligation with OG for us to carry a builder's policy. Um, we had in the budget approximately eighty six thousand six hundred dollars budgeted, but when we at, went out and we got our premium costs, it came in over two hundred thousand dollars. So we would have to approve. This amount just to take some out of contingency and pay this invoice um, to Kerma, which is the insurance program. So, 
um, just higher costs and market. I think you can you talk to us in finance about how you've been seeing this on other projects. We have most recently seen insurance fees at all levels. Um, go up because they have a community for working with their GL, their property insurance is going through the roof and so have the building expenses. And so I'm not surprised, right? We're working on a $28 million project and the cost for builder's risk is over 100,000. So comparatively, I and, um, we also added about $10 million worth of work to the projects, which is um, increase our, our retail percentages, right? We didn't have to focus because of the so. and, and just to note that this um, $205,000 is for the new high school building only. We will have to get another premium for the central office when we do that. There is a budget for 4000 Yeah, and this is to take that difference out of contingency and allow us to pay this invoice. Anybody have any questions on that one? No? All right, okay. Um, so the motion on the table is to move the filing invoice back to funds of high school. We add the amendment though to remove the um, natural <laughs> gas. Uh, invoice for $17,369.72. Um, no, I, I think we'll just leave it as amended. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, it motion passes. All right, and then one final item um, in your business, which is item three. Uh, so could I get a motion to approve the cash invoice from Paul Timbers Marketing, the amount of $4,660? Okay. All right, um, just quick note on this one. It just shows as a separate item, because if you remember, if you were looking at um, tax finance report, this is a definite separate funding source for us, which is actually our committee but it, um, that we're taking this money out of, so it's, it's separated from the invoice packages uh, for everything else we just approved. So just to make sure everybody had that clarification. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, any other business? Comments, questions, good news? My work meetings now all ended and everybody's good news oh, that they'd like to share. Everybody's logging out this morning. Yeah. You have them the clamps in your backyard. Oh, bring them into yes. the house. Yeah. 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 The front. The tree that was on top of the beam for the dropping off ceremony, Nelson had a great idea that we're going to be planting it on the site, actually. So we did a walk today um, and looked at the location kind of in, in the barrier between the school and the neighborhood. So we're hoping to put a little plaque that it was for the oh, dropping off Yeah. Yep. Yes. All right, so our next meeting is scheduled for June, right? Is it June? June 7th, June 7th, June 7th, June 7th, June 7th which possible oh, that, June. what do we have a finance committee before? June 7th and June 21st. Right, I think your next required meeting would be the 21st based on the professional meeting unless the 21st yeah okay okay if we yes yeah. so i think most likely our our general pattern has been unless the professional partners need us for something immediately to move the schedule along then we tend to be canceling our first meetings the month but keeping them on the calendar these so um so yeah we've got a little bit of time probably before we see better as yeah. uh, do we think we can can't do we want to cancel it now? We can we can it now or do we think, think we need to wait to call it? Yeah, 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 so I was going to be a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Motion is second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion passes. 
All right. Since we won't be here on the day, congratulations to our graduates. They will actually meet out of your graduation. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll hear say that. that. Yeah, my son is graduating. So that's a big deal for us. Um, thank you. Thank you. We did it. Your last year. Exactly. Um, but I'm sure there'll be more good news to share at that point, too, for everybody. But sounds good. Thank you very much. We appreciate Thank you for the tour. Yeah. And your hospitality. Yeah. 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 Ye